How's it going guys? This is Trent from No Nut Clarity. Coming to you today with a video that I want to talk about why I feel like pretty much everybody has a little bit of ADHD in them. So what do I mean by that? Well, since we've had social media get huge and everybody's been sharing things that are relatable, we see a lot of people, and especially me, I see people that post things as far as like, um, they had an ADHD moment where they either picked up something and walked away having a completely different item and forgot what they were doing in the first place and forgot why it's even in their hand. Like, for example, I can even bring one up. I went to work and um, had a water bottle in my hand and for, or thought I had a water bottle in my hand. Somehow ended up bringing a giant banana plushie into work. And I see a lot of that being posted on like like Instagram, TikTok, wherever wherever you go, you're gonna see like people with like ADHD moments like, you know, I forgot this, um, the second like I thought about it. Um, it's hard to really put into perspective because there's so many different things you would see, but typically a lot of people will post it and what makes me really think about that pretty much everybody has some kind of HD in them or at least something about them that has like a symptom of it is that you see the relatable video and then you see like a million people liking it and commenting like I had the same moment it's like I'm normal but I do the same exact thing and it's like so does everybody just have it like if like because <laughs> when I was a kid <laughs> when I was a kid it was like you had ADHD or you had ADD or you're autistic or something like that. And you would have like a select few kids in school like have that and they're considered the weirdos. But now it feels like everybody seems to have some type of like symptom of it. Like nobody can focus, nobody can sit still, nobody can remember shit. And of course everybody's built different. Not everybody goes through the same exact symptoms, but at least like... I would say like, you know, three out of five people are going to say they've experienced some kind of thing like that. And I feel like people are just coming out more and more with like those symptoms saying it's like that I've related to that quite a bit. And not to put a label on everybody because again, like ADHD is a label, ADD is considered a label. You don't, even, you don't even hear about ADD anymore. Like everyone says it's just under the scope of ADHD. And I'm no psychiatrist. Like, I'm no psychiatrist, no psychologist. I don't give any prescription medications, but when you see, like, everybody's kind of relating to the same thing, and these people who are relating to it, some, sometimes a lot of them seem like they're, like, normal, or, what do you call it? Like, these have, like, seem like they're normal people that have, like, supposed to have, like, normal brain function saying that I relate to this, or I have like I've done this before it's like so does that mean they're ADHD too because they've done that and it just got me thinking like there's more to it than just like have ADHD like being like of course being diagnosed and have ADHD is one thing and being undiagnosed and have ADHD is another thing but when society as a whole is coming together and starting to just, you know, say, it's like, you know, hey, this is super relatable. Then it's like, there's something, I mean, I mean, hell, with the fact that ADD is no longer really used that widespread, it's supposed seem like people will put labels on people and say they're ADHD or say they're ADD or something like that. When everybody kind of acts a similar way in some capacity. And I just feel like we are all, like, I mean, of course there's a spectrum, but of course I feel like just we are all, like, either ADHD or autistic in our own way. Because everybody has their little quirks and tics. Even though we're all different people, we all have, like, little quirks. Even somebody that seems very normal, they have some kind of quirk to them, usually, or a little tic. Something that triggers them to do some behavior, something like that. Like, everybody has one of those. And just because somebody has something that seems like quirky, does that immediately mean they're ADHD or autistic or are they considered normal, you know, in society standards? And that may not be the most shocking news you've heard. Like, we've all learned leaps and bounds about mental health over the past, like, 
10, 15 years where everybody's being diagnosed with different things, everybody's getting depressed, everybody's going through therapy, and everybody's just going through it. And it's just gotten worse over time, it seems. But what is really interesting to me is the way everybody's also like coping with it. Because ADHD or not, we all are going through some type of struggle, like mentally. And everybody has their own ways of coping with it. And usually it involves like substances, which is not always bad. Substances or habits or routines that may not always be the healthiest, but we all have our little things that we do to kind of like get ourselves mentally normal or mentally like mentally right, mentally stable enough to be able to like, you know, go do our job, go to work or go do our regular things need to do. Like some people need to take Adderall where it, I mean, well, we'll get the fat out of all, where you get to be able to get more focus, but also as a result, I know as somebody who took Adderall before as a kid got prescribed to him, um, it makes you more emotional, even though you're better focused, you get more emotional, you kind of use your lap appetite, and me being the big guy who eats a lot as this, losing my appetite was kind of scary, and it also um, makes you more horny in some cases where I mean I know around 11 years old that was around the time like the porn addiction started and thankfully um I've been able to overcome that but the side effects can't be ignored I'm not saying people can't take out of all like if it helps you it helps you everybody's this is again talking about coping mechanisms that people have to keep their mind on track but I'm just bringing awareness and recognizing that, like, one aspect of, like, people who either have ADHD or need help getting their self, getting their mind right, will take Adderall and will have, like, the ability to focus more, but also have these side effects that happen to them. Like, when I was 11 years old, taking Adderall, like, I was less hungry, I was definitely horny, and I was having, like, as far as emotions, I was having like these existential crises where I would look in the mirror and like I could look at my camera right now, like like is that me? Is this who? It's me. Is this is who I am? What's my purpose in life? And I'm like thinking all that as like an 11 year old kid, just like having this out of body experience, like whoa, this is what I look like, and I'm just like suddenly panicking over like how long do I have to live? <laughs> I'm like everybody doesn't do that, but it was just so. Like, I don't do that. I've only had that while I was taking Adderall. I'm like, but this is so weird to think back on it. Wow. And it was crazy. But Adderall is still one of those things that can help people. But I'm just acknowledging that, like, you know, it is one of the things that we use to cope to help us keep our mind on track when we have either diagnosed ADHD or just people that just want to have focus. Another thing I want to bring up is people that also smoke weed. And, again, I have nothing against, like, Adderall, weed, or anything people use for, as far as substances, as long as you don't like overdo it and hurt yourself. I mean, you're you're probably going to do whatever you want, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like um, people who smoke or use weed recreationally to keep themselves like de-stress, keep the anxiety away, maybe even use it to help focus. Um, like it works for them; it gets their mind in a place where they can actually be comfortable with themselves, especially when it's, the anxiety is getting, like, overwhelming for them. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it's also a side effect of, like, you get lethargic, it lower, it impairs your brain function, especially over time with more and more frequent use of it. And so it has those side effects, but it has the benefit, like, of actually being able to help you get mentally right in a state where you can actually function better. And there's multiple examples of just, like, Things that just help you out mentally that people use to overcome like either ADHD, anxiety, uh, cases of like people having signs of autism where they used to help them just be able to function. Like people use ashwagandha, people use just even outside of substances, people use um, like different routines set. Of course, people have therapy where they get recommended things that will like lifestyle changes that will help them like, you know, function better. But all this is showing is that even outside of ADHD, autism, any mental illness you could think of, 
we definitely all have our ways of coping with our like the things that do that make us struggle mentally. We all have our coping mechanisms. And so it's not just people with ADHD that have to like take something in order to be regular. Like even somebody who is regular may need to take hell there's like like brain pills, like like there's pills, there's vitamins that help you like focus, that get advertised a lot. There's like some workout supplements that like improve like brain cognition, like mushroom coffee that helps with it. And that's another example of something that you would take that you'll use if you feel like you need your brain to function better. And all of these things, all these substances, these routines, like they help people cope with whatever is going on with them, whether it be like ADHD, whether it be anxiety, whether it be just not being able to focus, whether it be just like de-stressing, like you're going to take something. And so just because somebody's labeled as having like ADHD or autism or some, some, uh, some, any type of autism, it doesn't like, they're no different as far as like needing like a substance or a routine to keep their mind in a place where they can actually function and focus. And that's literally the point of this video. It's not to make anybody feel bad for being put under a label of having this or having that, be it's not being diagnosed as this, being diagnosed as that, and it's like all of a sudden it's like, oh, the stigma is like, oh, this guy has ADHD, he's automatically hyper. This guy has autism, so he can't communicate properly. So don't talk to him. It's to raise awareness of the fact that everybody has some type of tick, some type of like thing with them, something that would trigger that just makes them seem like they may have ADHD or something like that, but they may not even be diagnosed. It may not even hell, even if they go to get diagnosed, they may say, you know, you're just a normal person, you just have some weird trait about you. Like, everybody has one, and it's okay to have that label or not have a label, but at the same time, I want to raise awareness that looks like, regardless of like what we have and what we take for it, or even if we don't have anything, it just takes something just to keep us mentally just sane in this crazy ass where we live in to just be good humans to each other like i've known people that were considered autistic or a or adhd like i have i have been diagnosed with adhd and my doctor told me i grew out of it and i'm like now nah. i'm like no the fuck i don't no the fuck i did not i definitely have a hard time focusing a lot it took me a lot of focus just to get to making this freaking video um, I've had a nephew um, that's autistic. Like he can barely communicate like normally, but they found a way. They found a routine and found like habits for him where he can actually communicate in his own way. Hell, like even like my ex girlfriend, um, she told me that she was autistic, and that didn't change the dang thing about like you know me like loving her, like. I didn't take it as like, you know, oh, you're autistic. Oh, no. <laughs> Red flag. Like, no, not that. It's more so it's like you're still the person that, like, I want to be with. So that being said, instead of just, you know, treating people that get labeled as like, you know, AHD autistic or, you know, depressed or, you know, major anxiety, all these labels, treat them as people because we're all still people at the end of the day. And regardless of labels, you still see people, label or not, still taking things and doing things to keep them sane, keep their mind right, keep their mind healthy, or trying to get them to be able to communicate. Because honestly, we're just people and we just need to have that extra help, especially nowadays with the world going so crazy. So this is just raise awareness of the fact that anybody, anybody, can display traits of like ADHD, autism, or any type of like mental illness. But that doesn't make it invalid for them to still be considered a person. Like don't just like cast them aside as like, oh, they have this label. Oh, they have that label. Like let's just treat each other as like good humans, regardless of whatever we have, whatever coping mechanism we use. Just try to be good to each other. It may be a corny ass message, but that's exactly like what I want to portray. But anyway, that's my rant about why I feel like everybody has a little bit of ADHD and why everybody is more similar than you think. 
and we all have our own ways to cope and deal with our own mental struggles as we go through this bitch of a world. And yeah, that's all I had to say. Honestly, if you got this far, thank you so much for watching this video. And hope to see you in the next one. This has been Trent from Not Clarity, and peace.